Let's start off by looking at a circle of radius 1, which is called a unit circle. It is centred at the origin, 0, 0, and we're going to look at the points on the circumference of the circle. You might already know that the quadrants of the plane are numbered anti-clockwise, starting at the first quadrant where all the x and y values are positive. Then there's the second quadrant, the third quadrant, and the fourth quadrant. We can draw a line segment from the origin to any point on the edge of this circle and think about the angle that's made between the x-axis and this line. In fact, there are two angles that are made, but we only ever think about the angle made with a positive x-axis, which is shown here as a blue arc. The angle starts at 0 degrees when we're at the positive x-axis then gets to 90 degrees when we move up to the positive y-axis. Then the angle goes from 90 to 180 degrees. The angle moves from 180 to 270 degrees as we go through the third quadrant, and finally goes from 270 to 360 degrees in the fourth quadrant. This final angle, 360 degrees, brings us back to the start. So this point is the same as if we had an angle of 0 degrees. Let's look at the coordinates of this point on the circle. You can see that as the angle changes, the coordinates change too. They start at 1, 0 when the angle is 0 degrees. Then they are 0, 1 when the angle is 90 degrees. Negative 1, 0 at 180 degrees. 0, negative 1 at 270 degrees. And then back to 1, 0 at 0 or 360 degrees. The word trigonometry literally refers to measuring within triangles, but a more helpful way to think about trigonometry is in terms of how angles relate to points on a unit circle. For that reason, the subject of trigonometry is sometimes referred to as circular functions. If we change the angle to 35 degrees, you'll see that both coordinates are numbers between 0 and 1. That's not surprising, since we are in the first quadrant and the circle has a radius of 1, so the biggest value they could ever have is 1. You can see that the x value is about 0 0.819 and the y value is about 0 0.574. It's a bit of a mouthful to say the x value of the point on a unit circle when the angle is 35 degrees, so instead of saying that, we'll call this cos 35 degrees. It's also a bit annoying to have to say the y value of the point on a unit circle when the angle is 35 degrees. So we'll call this sine 35 degrees. You've probably seen cos and sine on calculators before, so let's check that cos of 35 degrees is indeed 0.819. The calculator has some extra decimal places, but you can see that it's the same when rounded. And let's also check what sine 35 degrees is. In general, the cos of an angle is the x-coordinate and the sine of an angle is the y-coordinate. You can also think about a triangle where cos is the width of the triangle and sine is the height. For example, cos 60 degrees is 0.5 and sine 60 degrees is 0.866. Just checking again on our calculator, cos 60 is indeed 1 half and sine 60 is about 0.866. There are some sine and cos values we can work out just by thinking about them. For instance, what are sine and cos of 90 degrees? The point 90 degrees corresponds to 0, 1. So cos 90 is 0 and sine 90 is 1. You might have noticed that as we have increased the angle, the cos values have been getting smaller and now it's at 0. What do you think is going to happen if we move into the second quadrant? Now we are at 115 degrees and the x-coordinate is negative because it is left of the y-axis. So, cos 115 degrees is negative 0.423 and sine 115 degrees is 0.906. The sine value is still positive here because the y-values are all positive in this quadrant. Any point up here is above the x-axis. Let's just check these values on a calculator. If we move down to the third quadrant, you can see that both the x and y coordinates are negative, so the cos and sine values are both negative. Finally, if the angle is moved into the fourth quadrant, the x values are positive here, but the y values are all negative. 
This angle here is 320 degrees. So cos 320 is 0.766 and sine 320 is negative 0.643. If we keep going up to 360 degrees, we're back to the start at 1, 0. So cos 360 is 1 and sine 360 is 0. To work out something like cos 380 degrees, we could just calculate cos 20 degrees because it reaches the same point on the circumference. For that reason, we generally just consider angles between 0 and 360 degrees because we can just subtract 360 degrees until we get to an angle in this range. What about if we start with a negative angle, like negative 15 degrees? Well, going back around the circle 15 degrees is the same as going forward 345 degrees. And you can see, for instance, that sine negative 15 is minus 0.259, and that's the same as sine 345. There is a third function that's often talked about in connection with sine and cos, and that's the tan function. You might think that if cos is the width of a triangle and sine is the height, then tan is the hypotenuse. Well, that's not quite right, because the length of the hypotenuse is always 1. That was the whole idea of having a unit circle. The tan value is equal to the gradient of this line segment, though. So, for instance, tan 0 is 0 because that's a horizontal line. There are other ways of thinking about tan, but this way is probably the simplest. If we move to 45 degrees, you can see the rise and run are both 0.707. So it's a gradient of one. That is, tan 45 degrees equals one. The tan value can also go above one, like with tan 72 degrees. The rise is 0.951 and the run is 0.309. So the tan value is roughly 0.951 divided by 0.309, which is 3.08. You can check this on a calculator. As you get closer to 90 degrees, the line gets steeper and steeper. And at 90 degrees, it's a vertical line, so it has an undefined gradient. Therefore, tan 90 degrees is undefined. In the second quadrant, you can see that the gradient will be negative. So tan of any of these angles is a negative number. In the third quadrant, the gradients are all positive here. For instance, tan 220 degrees, the rise is 0.643 and the run is 0.766, so the gradient is 0.84. Finally, in the fourth quadrant, the gradients are negative. So tan of any angle in this quadrant would also be negative. To summarize, we started with a unit circle, a circle of radius one centered at zero, zero. We connected the origin to a point on the circle with a line segment. As we changed the angle, we saw the coordinates of our point on the circle changed. The cos of an angle is the x-coordinate of this point, and the sine of an angle is the y-coordinate. These values are always between negative 1 and 1, because they need to fit on a circle of radius 1. The tan of an angle is the gradient of the line segment, and it can be any number. For some angles, the tan of that angle is undefined because vertical lines have undefined gradient. The study of the sine, cos and tan functions is called trigonometry and the unit circle is the key to understanding this branch of mathematics.